as you were getting closer to the end, did you start to kind of maybe uncover a new purpose for who you are and, you know, uh, you know, in the grander scheme of things um, and, and your life's mission? Yeah, great question. In fact, uh, during the show Survivor, I won a reward challenge and I won two goats, which I wasn't so happy about. <laughs> but I got to take these goats to this little village of Wamba. And before I left this village of Wamba, I was hanging on the parking lot of Wamba Hospital. And all these little Kenyan children came out and they're touching my skin. They're playing with my Jufro, you know, like they had never yeah. seen anyone like me before. And so back in the day, you were allowed to bring a luxury item, which is one item that reminds you of your life away from the game of Survivor. For me, I brought a hacky sack, like, mm. like a little mini soccer ball right there. Yeah. All these kids came out and like, I couldn't speak the language. I didn't know what to do with them. So I busted out my hacky sack and we start playing and laughing, connecting through this sport that we both love and a language that we understand. I'm like, okay. And then before I left this parking lot of the hospital, one of the nurses comes over to me. She's like, these are the kids that are HIV positive. Wow. Like, wow. Like here I am in the middle of this game, this cutthroat game of survivor. And I had that real life experience. So it was at that moment I decided, okay, like if this goes my way and I end up doing well in the show, I want to do something good with the money and the, the platform and whatever this silly reality show brings me. So I ended up winning, get home from the show, met up with some of my soccer buddies of mine. And that's kind of when we started Grassroots Soccer. I used the winnings to, to co-found Grassroots Soccer. So the money was important, but my mind shifted from le for le less of like my own you know, I don't buy a car, yeah. go to Vegas, you know, sure. you know, strippers, you know, gambling, all that stuff Like you think a 27 year old kid would want to do. So when I got back, my, my, my philosophy in life kind of switched and I want to use that money for something good. And I think that stems back to when I was a youth, because when I was 14 years old, cancer came into my home and it took my father away from me. Mm. And so growing up, I, I appreciated early on in life, I think the value of community, like this is a time where I just wanted to like go into my room, not come out and play or talk to anyone, but it's my friends, my soccer player friends, my family, the Jewish community around me, they're the ones that reached out, they're the ones that embraced me. And I mean, you know the same thing, like when you're going through cancer, you know, the the community and the, the love and support around you for me was was beautiful and overwhelming and so i just wanted to pay it forward a little bit like people helped me during my time through my dad i had a really interesting experience playing soccer in africa where a couple of my friends got sick with hiv kicked off the team lived the end of their life in a really horrible lonely way and then i was on survivor and got a big pot of money and a big platform so like how can i bring all these things together to create change in this world and grassroots soccer was the answer and so these other guys that I met up with, Dr. Tommy Clark, sorry, Dr. Tommy Clark, Kirk Friedrich, Matembe, and Lovu, we'd all played in Africa together. And so we just started this organization. And so from a little reality show, we started with seven schools in Zimbabwe. And now we are in 60 countries with 18 million graduates, raised about 120 million since inception. So beautiful, awesome, super proud of what we've accomplished. Thank you for tuning in to this clip of the Mile 40 podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to watch the entire interview, please click here and be sure to subscribe below.